The next item of business is a statement by Michael Matheson on Human Trafficking First Annual Progress Report. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Michael Matheson. Ten minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. President, President Officer, I am sure that all in this chamber agree that human trafficking is a terrible crime and an appalling abuse of human rights. It targets the most vulnerable, uh, both across the globe and here in Scotland, and the impact on victims is devastating. In 2015, this Parliament unanimously passed the Human Trafficking and Exploitation Scotland Act, and I laid the first trafficking and exploitation strategy before Parliament in May 2017. The strategy was the result of extensive joint working and consultation including through the cross-party group on human trafficking and reflects the views of victims themselves. During this first year of strategy implementation, we have continued to work in partnership with victims, with support organisations such as Tara, Migrant Help and the Scottish Guardian Service, and with a range of other bodies, including COSLA, Police Scotland, Crown Office and the Procurator Fiscal Service and the Independent Anti-Slavery Commissioner. Significant progress has been made, which is set out in the first annual report published today. And I'm grateful to all partners who have contributed to this work. The strategy sets out a clear structure with actions falling under four broad headings. The identification of victims and supporting them to safety and recovery identifying perpetrators and disrupting their activity, addressing the conditions that foster trafficking and exploitation and supporting child trafficking victims. There is widespread interest in the issue of human trafficking and guidance has been developed to offer accurate and consistent advice for both professional and public audiences. This covers what human trafficking is, its extent in Scotland, signs to look out for, the impact on victims, how to report concerns and how to access further information. Police Scotland and partners have created an e-learning training resource for public sector workers who may come into contact with victims. This has now been published on DVD and distributed through Scottish Government funding. In terms of public awareness, a standard presentation has been developed, drawing on material from Migrant Help, Tara, Police Scotland and the Scottish Government. And this will be available for use by community groups and anyone with an interest. Identifying potential victims is the first step, but it's vital that effective victim-centred support is in place following this. I announced last year our intention to extend the minimum period of support from 45 days to 90 days. Following unanimous agreement in the Justice Committee, this came into force in April of this year. Alongside identical provisions for victims of slavery, servitude and forced or compulsory, compulsory labour. This 90-day period is double the minimum support period in the rest of the UK. We've backed this up with substantial increases in funding for Migrant Help and Tara, who support adult trafficking victims in Scotland, as well as more funding for psychological trauma support through the Anchor Service. Child victims of trafficking are supported through child protection services, and the strategy includes a section covering the needs of child victims. In January, Section 12 of the Act was implemented, ensuring that where doubts exist as to whether a victim is under 18, it must be assumed they are a child until age is established. This will ensure that individuals receive immediate age-appropriate support. To support social workers and others undertaking age assessment of potential child victims of trafficking, we published guidance in March following a process of consultation 
and development with partners. Alongside the work to improve support to victims, Police Scotland has led on improvements to the identification and disruption of trafficking. In March, the first conviction under the 2015 Act were secured, with two individuals sentenced to 10 and 7 years imprisonment, respectively, for offences related to slavery, servitude and forced or compulsory labour. The 2015 Act provides for two new court orders, trafficking and exploitation prevention orders and trafficking and exploitation risk orders. These orders came into force during 2017 and both individuals convicted in this case were also made subject to prevention orders, reducing their ability to further exploit others. The National Human Trafficking Unit within Police Scotland has coordinated intelligence-led operations throughout divisions over the past year, focusing on labour exploitation, sexual exploitation, child trafficking, domestic servitude, illegal border activity, and Romanian and Vietnamese trafficking. These operations uncovered a range of offences, including criminal activity in respect of drugs, sexual exploitation, and brothel keeping. Police Scotland and partners have undertaken joint days of action, executing warrants, disrupting illegal activity, and supporting victims to safety with the assistance of TARA. Police Scotland works closely with European law enforcement colleagues and has arrangements in place through Europol to share relevant information with law enforcement agencies right across Europe. This includes joint investigations, for example, with Romanian police focusing on individuals involved in trafficking women for sexual exploitation. Police Scotland has also benefited from the secondment of Romanian police officers to support human trafficking operations. It's not enough to disrupt trafficking when it occurs or support victims after the fact. The vision behind the strategy is to eliminate trafficking and exploitation. And to do this, we need to address the root causes and build a society where trafficking cannot flourish. Businesses and our wider communities have an important role in this. From August to October 2017, we ran a national awareness raising campaign featuring a short film screened during advert breaks on TV alongside digital adverts through smartphones and social media. Over this time, the Modern Slavery Helpline recorded a significant increase in contact from Scotland from two potential victims per week to 10 per week. To assess the impact of the media campaign, a public survey was undertaken in March of this year and found that awareness of trafficking had increased. Of those surveyed, 87% said they would report trafficking suspicions to Police Scotland, a marked increase from 80% last year. We are working with business, businesses in Scotland and have established a corporate group which is looking into provision of guidance and training, raising awareness and sharing best practice and improving the quality of slavery and human trafficking statements. Sign officer, I'm happy to report that significant progress made in implementation of the strategy one year on from publication. This has been achieved through joint work between the Scottish Government, COSLA, Police Scotland, support organisations, businesses and a wide range of other bodies and will have a positive impact on victims and efforts to combat trafficking both in Scotland and further afield. This is good progress but there is much more to do. The report sets out key priorities for the next year including developing communication channels to raise awareness and trust amongst victims, and further work to engage and support businesses in tackling trafficking. We will 
Mark, make progress on the outstanding Acts provisions on duty to notify. A trial implementation is underway with City of Edinburgh Council. We are looking to establish a further trial with other relevant bodies and we are working to ensure the digital platform currently being developed for the UK National Referral Mechanism will work with duty to notify in Scotland. On independent child trafficking guardians, we plan to consult in the autumn on proposed roles and responsibilities and the existing Scottish Guardianship Service will continue to work until the new statutory arrangements are in place. Sign officer, a further progress report will be published one year from now in line with the commitment set out in the strategy. Uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. And the Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for those questions and then we'll move on to the next item of business. May I ask members who wish to ask a question to press the request to speak buttons now. And I first of all call Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. Presiding Officer, the Cabinet Secretary asserted at the outset that human trafficking is a terrible crime and an appalling abuse of human rights. Those on these benches have no hesitation in agreeing to that and endorse his choice of words. The problems this legislation and the report seeks to address are a scourge on society and therefore any attempt to forensically analyse and address human trafficking and rescue victims from it is hugely welcome. I welcome the progress that has been made, but as a Cabinet Secretary said, there is more to do. The Cabinet Secretary says that he will make progress on the outstanding provisions of the 2015 Act, being the duty on public authorities to notify and the provision of independent child trafficking guardians. These are crucial steps and they cannot afford any unwarranted delay. So might I first of all push him to provide further detail on what his target date for commencement of these sections will be. And furthermore, the report makes several positive references to security and law enforcement cooperation across the UK. For example, the development of a joint digital platform for the national referral mechanism and duty to notify. Indeed, intelligence sharing is a key outcome of the strategy. So does the Cabinet Secretary agree that in order to tackle the evil of human trafficking, it is vital that this cross-border cooperation continues seamlessly and that anything which could disrupt that collaboration must be avoided. Michael Matheson. Afternoon, officer, I'm grateful for the member's uh, comments. Let me try to address the issues which he's read, uh, raised specifically. I mentioned my, in my statement the uh, plans we have for the duty to notify where we have a pilot in place just now with the City of Edinburgh uh, Council uh, which has been operating for uh, several months. Um, there are some issues around uh, the amount of cases which have come from the existing pilot and we're looking to extend a further pilot with uh, another agency, potentially Border Force, in order to uh, ensure that it operates effectively. The purpose that we are, uh, for which we are taking this forward through pilots is to ensure that the system operates effectively and has been uh, utilised properly. Alongside that, we want the information which is gathered through the new digital platform which we're working with the Home Office on, uh, which is associated with the national referral mechanism to ensure that we have one single data set. So the information that we gather through the duty to notify also uh, is submitted into the system which gathers data from uh, the national referral mechanisms. There has been some delays in the procurement of that particular digital platform, uh, which has had an impact on taking some of this work forward. However, we are working closely with the Home Office to ensure that happens. Secondly, on the issue of the independent uh, guardians, um, I would like to have made further progress with this than we have at the present uh, moment. Uh, and we do intend to have a consultation in autumn specifically to get clarity around uh, roles and responsibilities so that there are no uh, areas of uncertainty between the role of the local authority and the role of the independent guardian to ensure we have clarity on that matter. And let me uh, finish on uh, the final point which a member raised, and that is the issue of intelligence sharing. And at the present moment, we have very effective intelligence sharing uh, on these matters in tackling serious and organised crime and also in tackling matters such as uh, human trafficking. And I agree with the member, we should ensure that no uh, unnecessary barriers get in the way in the sharing of uh, data and intelligence as and when that is appropriate. However, the member will be aware that one of the biggest risks which we face around intelligence sharing is Brexit. We are about to lose our full membership of Europol, 
which is one of the main hubs for the sharing of this information across all 28 states within the European Union at the present moment. Alongside that, we will potentially also lose access to the Schengen Information 2 system, again, which allows us to identify markers on individuals who may be moving around Europe, who are individuals that the police would wish to apprehend. And as I set out in our report today on security and justice matters in Europe, there are real risks that we will lose access to this intelligence and this information. And from the lack of engagement we've had with the Home Office on this matter, it's simply unacceptable that we should potentially be creating such risks with such little progress being made on it. So I agree with the member's comments on it, and I ask him to use his good offices within the Conservative Party to ensure that the Home Office and the UK Government engage with us properly on these issues to ensure there are no gaps once we've left Europe. Call Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, can I thank the Minister for prior sight of his statement, but most importantly, can I fully agree uh, with him that human trafficking is an appalling abuse of human rights? And indeed, can I welcome this report as an extremely useful update on progress that is being made on this vital issue? But I think it also uh, importantly sets out the work that still needs to be done. The strength of any strategy is the degree to which it can uh, be measured against uh, progress and identify areas for improvement. So on that, can I ask the Minister what he believes the most critical steps are in terms of improving our capacity and capability for identification of those trafficked and also those who seek to perpetrate these acts? Um, I also note the sharp increase in those identified as uh, victims of human trafficking this year. And given the hidden nature of human trafficking, what does the Minister believe the overall scale of human trafficking is in Scotland and the sense of the proportion of those trafficked um, uh, that are being identified currently? Thank you. Michael Matheson. General Officer, I'm grateful for the Member's comments and I, uh, like him, think that the strategy and the annual report are an important element of making sure that we continue to look at the progress that we are making and also to identify the issues that we need to address uh, moving uh, forward. Uh, the benefits, I believe, from the annual uh, report and having a ministerial statement on it, uh, which is through my choice, is to continually to challenge ourselves in that we are doing everything possible to tackle uh, this appalling crime, a crime that many of us recognise is very often hidden and not fully appreciated and recognised. The member asked me to identify uh, a couple of key areas where I think there is a need, uh, there is risk uh, where we need to make further progress in identification of those who may be getting uh, trafficked um, or it may be in slavery and servitude. Uh, one area where I think there is need, more progress needs to be made is around the national referral mechanism. At the present moment, the timeline for uh, cases being considered at the present time is too long. Uh, there are delays in the system and it needs to improve. Uh, that's a matter which I've already taken up with the Home Office uh, in order to seek improvements to the system uh, and we'll continue to press them to see what further progress can be made on that issue. But it's an issue that I do recognise uh, is causing undue delay and undue anxiety and needs to be uh, addressed. And the other potential barrier here is a lack of uh, awareness, uh, a greater recognition of the risks of uh, uh, trafficking. Uh, I think it's it's rather telling that the first two convictions under our new legislation in this area were to do with domestic servitude and individuals being held in uh, slavery uh, or forced labour. Labor. That in itself just demonstrates this is something which is taking place on our own doorstep and need to recognise that, that this is not something that's just about people coming into the country and being trafficked in, but that it can also be taking place here at a domestic level. So that greater public awareness and a greater understanding across all agencies, public and private, are, that is absolutely uh, critical. And as the member uh, also highlighted, we have saw an increase in reporting, uh, a 38% increase in the number of cases referred to the National Referral Mechanism in 2017. Um, I suspect that 38% increase is still just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, and there are still a significant amount of cases which are going unidentified, which is why we need to remain vigilant in this matter and we need to continually to challenge the approaches which we're taking to do everything we can to identify individuals who may be getting trafficked and who may be in forced labour. Now, the two opening questions were fairly detailed and the answers fairly long. We do have quite a few to get through, so may I ask those taking part to be succinct with both questions and answers. And I call Ash Denham, followed by Margaret Mitchell. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. The trafficking of women and girls for sexual exploitation is increasingly now recognised as a global human rights crisis. But intelligence suggests that organised crime groups are involved in sexual exploitation to a greater degree than other forms of slavery. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if the Progress Report acknowledges that this is a problem and what more can the government do to combat it? Michael Matheson. Uh, officer, the member is correct in identifying that uh, organised crime groups can often be involved in uh, uh, human trafficking for the purposes of sexual exploitation and in the annual report in several sections of it. That's very clear. Um, if the member uh, looks even at uh, uh, area three uh, within the actual annual report, at page, uh, page 33, uh, there is a specific reference to uh, aspects around uh, the increased focus on commercial sexual exploitation uh, and the multi-agency work that has been taken forward in this field. Very often, uh, OCGs will uh, not only be involved in human trafficking, they will be involved in other forms of illegal activity. Uh, and the member can be assured that this is an area which Police Scotland give very considerable uh, attention to, uh, and that very often sexual exploitation is a part of the work of these organisations, and it will continue to be a key focus on the enforcement work that we take forward, but also the prevention work that has been taken forward. Margaret Mitchell, followed Thank by Christina McKelvey. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary has already stated that the 63 trafficked children identified in Scotland this year is likely to be the tip of the iceberg. Building trust with these trafficked and sexually exploited young people is key in aiding disclosure. Will the Cabinet Secretary therefore meet with the voluntary organisations and charities such as Ad Action, who have a proven record in Glasgow, and South Lanarkshire of building this trust and identifying these young people where statutory organisations have failed. And could he also confirm... No, I think that's enough, Ms Mitchell. <laughs> Thank you. Michael Matheson. Officer, as the member will be aware, the provisions for the uh, support of uh, uh, children who have been identified as being uh, trafficked is through our child protection uh, arrangements and also through the uh, Scottish, Scottish Guardianship uh, provision. Um, if the member wants to send me further information about particular organisations, I have no doubt will be uh, more than happy to engage with them. But the primary role uh, for taking forward any services for young people who have been identified as being trafficked is through our child protection uh, provisions, which is delivered by local authorities. Christina McKelvey, followed by Rhoda Grant. Thank you very much, President Officer. The award-winning Scottish Guardianship Service provides support to, re support to refugee children who are alone or separated from their families. The Cabinet Secretary will know that the hostile environment from the Home Office makes it difficult for children without an independent advocate to navigate the complex system. So can the Cabinet Secretary give us an update on the eligibility criteria for trafficked children in Scotland and how they can access an independent advocate through the Guardianship Service? Michael Matheson. Officer, as I mentioned, the uh, Scottish Guardianship Service will continue to be in place until the independent guardianship arrangements have been uh, implemented. Part of the purpose of the consultation which we're undertaking in the course of uh, the autumn will be allow us to be very clear about the role and the responsibilities of the independent guardian to address some of the issues that my colleague has just raised. And during the course of that, I've got no doubt that, that consultation exercise, of that size, I've got no doubt that the views of members from the cross-party group uh, will be very interested in feeding into that process, which I know the member is a long-standing uh, member of and has a long-standing interest in. Uh, we want to feed into that process to ensure that the independent guardians address the very concerns and issues that the members just highlighted. Rhoda Grant, followed by Emma Harper. Um, for, further to the question asked by Christine McKelvey, can I ask when the provision in the Act to uh, give unaccompanied children access to an independent guardian will actually be implemented because it's been two and a half years and we're still waiting for that section of the bill to be the act to be implemented. Michael Matheson. Uh, President Officer, this is an area, as I mentioned earlier on, I would like us to have made further progress on it. However, we have the uh, Scottish uh, Guardianship Programme, which is in place at the present moment, and that will continue. Once the consultation process has been completed this autumn, we'll then be in a position when we can then actually have the rollout of the independent guardian. I want that to happen sooner rather than later, but I want to make sure that we get the system right in working in partnership with local authorities before we start rolling it out. So I can give, although I can't give you a specific date in the matter, I can assure the member I want to see it rolled out sooner rather than later. Emma Harper followed by Patrick Harvey. Thank you. I welcome this important update from the Cabinet Secretary. 
Does he have concerns or would he agree with me that in order that the Scottish Government can successfully implement policies to significantly reduce human trafficking and give justice to the victims, this Parliament must have full control over immigration policy which will allow victims the choice to remain here in Scotland and not face deportation as a result of the UK Government being fixated on a hard Brexit? Michael Matheson. Yep, sign officer, this is an issue which has been raised with me by uh, some organisations who are working with individuals who have been identified as being uh, trafficked uh, and some of the uh, challenges which they can face due to uh, the overlap with the immigration uh, system. Uh, that remains an issue of concern for me about how the All Home Office are dealing with some of these cases uh, around human trafficking uh, matters. Uh, and in my view, there continues to be a mismatch in how uh, both these systems are operating. Um, as it's known, I'm in favour of immigration matters being the responsibility of this parliament. Uh, but what we will do is we'll continue to press the UK government and the Home Office in particular to ensure that the way in which the immigration system operates is more sympathetic and understanding of those victims who have been trafficked and some of the challenges which they may face. Patrick Harvey, followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary may be aware of the case of a constituent of mine, Luke Ngain, who was a victim of human trafficking and modern slavery, forced to work on a cannabis farm. And there's, as a result of that, he was arrested, he was imprisoned, and he's the one, despite being a victim of this crime, who was faced with the threat of imminent deportation just this week. Uh, he was got off the plane as a result of the pressure of thousands of his supporters, and we hope he'll be returned to Glasgow. What redress can the Scottish Government give to those who are criminalised in our justice system as a result of their experience of being victim of human trafficking and forced labour? Uh, and will the Scottish Government lend its support in the case of Luke? Michael Matheson. Epstein officer, I'm aware of uh, uh, this particular case and the issues which have been raised uh, by the member on this issue. Uh, when it comes to issues of uh, individuals who have been enforced into labour or servitude or uh, have been uh, trafficked, there is scope for compensation to be provided through the Criminal Injuries Compensation Authority. Uh, and alongside that, there is also uh, the possibility of the courts to set down that compensation should be paid uh, or provided to an individual as it will. Uh, the member will well recognise, though, that our uh, scope to redress some aspects around uh, asylum and immigration matters are very limited, uh, uh, given responsibilities in these matters lie. Uh, elsewhere. Uh, but what I can assure the member of is that the approach that we take through uh, the organisations that we support, so for example TARA uh, and Migrant Help, that are very often engaged with individuals who may uh, have uh, been exploited, who will have been exploited uh, uh, or been uh, subject to uh, trafficking, uh, that the range of scope that we allow them to provide to individuals is wider than the specific uh, purpose for which uh, we provide them funding for. So we recognise that very often they need to go beyond uh, the specific support uh, that we give them funding for, and that's something which we support and assist them with as and when we can in recognising some of the wider issues that need to be addressed uh, when individuals uh, do experience the very types of difficulties that the members just made reference to. I have four questions left. If we're aware of the short time, we may get them all in. Liam MacArthur to be followed by Kate Forbes. Thanks. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for uh, early sight of his statement, uh, welcome the report and also associate myself with these comments about a collective abhorrence to human trafficking. Cabinet Secretary, we are aware the Liberal Democrats fought for the introduction of independent child trafficking guardians and stronger identification and referral processes. So can he advise what the policy developments are that are stalling the implementation of this provision and also which organisations he believes uh, should be able to make a referral to appoint a guardian for a child? Michael Matheson. Uh, sign officer, the principal piece of work that we need to uh, take forward in relation to their implementation, as I mentioned to uh, Rhoda Grant, is the uh, consultation on the specific role and responsibilities that the independent guardian uh, will have. A key part of that work is to uh, uh, agree this in partnership with COSLA, uh, given their clear responsibility around child protection uh, matters. So once we have completed that piece of work in the autumn, um, I'm determined to make sure we do everything we can to have the independent guardianship arrangements in place. I do recognise the members' frustrations and other members' frustrations in the progress that's been made in this matter uh, to date. But once we've completed that work uh, and we can get assurance around how it will operate with local authorities, uh, that we will then be in a position uh, to have it finalised. That will include looking at uh, who can make referrals to it uh, and on what terms they can make those referrals. 
Kate Forbes, followed by Maurice uh, Corey. Thank you. What is the Scottish Government's position on victims of trafficking being granted compensation? Because the Minister will know that my constituency has seen one of the worst cases of labour exploitation. Michael Matheson. General Officers, the, the provisions for, within the Scottish criminal justice system for compensation on uh, criminal matters is in relation to is operated by the Criminal Engineers Compensation um, Authority, which we provide uh, funding for uh, for Scottish uh, cases, and that's a, a matter which can uh, which uh, someone can make an application uh, to. It is uh, uh, the, the the application must be on the basis of uh, a person having been uh, uh, convicted um, or acquitted um, of an offence that relates to uh, the legislation uh, for which this strategy. Uh, is underpinned uh, by. Uh, over and above that, there is scope for uh, sentencers uh, or sheriffs and judges to direct compensation to be paid uh, to victims, and that will be a matter which is at the discretion of a judge or sheriff at the time of sentencing. Maurice Corrie. Deputy President, officer, thank you. Um, the work already undertaken to raise awareness is, of course, welcome. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell the Chamber what further types of action will be taken to improve awareness of the problem of human trafficking? Michael Matheson. Um, as I said out my statement, the member will be aware we've already had a public information campaign and we've also uh, provided a suite of materials in order to help to ensure that people and individuals have access to information around uh, trafficking. That work will continue. We will consider what further media campaigns are appropriate and public information campaigns uh, would assist in heightening uh, public awareness of these issues. The work that we're doing through the corporate group that we've established is to ensure that the private sector are playing their part, particularly around issues relating to uh, forced uh, labour. Uh, and we're keen to expand that yet further. And that's one of the key measures that's been set out in the annual report as work that we will take forward in the coming year. Uh, thank you to Mr Corrie. We have time for Ruth Maguire. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Victims of human trafficking are particularly vulnerable to being sexually exploited. Can the Cabinet Secretary describe the action the Scottish Government is taking to tackle commercial sexual exploitation? Michael Matheson. Uh, President Officer, the Scottish Government is opposed to all forms of violence uh, against uh, women and a key part of our equally safe strategy that has been taken forward by uh, my colleague uh, Angela Constance is to make sure that we are doing everything we can to reduce the harm that's caused by sexual exploitation. A key part of the work uh, that has been uh, uh, now being progressed in order to address this issue is through a multi-agency working group to identify what further measures can be taken in order to reduce the risk and harm that's associated with sexual exploitation. And that work will begin taking forward in the coming months. That concludes questions on human trafficking first annual progress report. We'll move on to the next item of business. I'll give you a few moments to change seats appropriately. <laughs>